Hey, my good friends, Sam Haymart with Test Driven TV. Today we are out here in the beauty of nature test driving the all new redesigned 2023 Toyota Sequoia full size SUV. So I'm going to show it to you inside and out. We're going to take it for a drive both on and off the road. And then I'm going to tell you what I really think. Okay, my friends, what we've got here is a very well-equipped, very well-loaded platinum trim grade 4x4 in the all-new 2023 Toyota Sequoia. As tested, we're pricing out at just under $80,000, just a couple of ticks. Now, as you look at this, you're thinking, gosh, I've seen this going down the road before. It looks just like a Toyota Tundra, and it should. It is based on the Toyota Tundra pickup truck, and so all of the body work up front is virtually identical. Uh, the platform chassis architecture is virtually identical, although the wheelbase is a bit shorter at 122 inches, but it is exactly the same size as the previous generation Sequoia. Overall length is just a couple of inches different, but it's got the same footprint overall. Coming around to the rear three-quarter view, this is where the bodywork actually does get quite a bit different from the Tundra pickup truck. We've got the full SUV greenhouse, and at the rear, a power opening gate. Now, this is a large one-piece gate that opens up. It does have a separate openable window just above so that you can get in smaller things without having to open that entire gate. Looking underneath, you can see this does have a full-size spare tire underneath there. And we'll get to the rest of the chassis components here in just a moment. A few options I do want to point out. This does have the power extending tow mirrors, which are very nice. They're pretty big, but they do fold in when you're parking in a parking lot. And so that you don't have to worry about those things getting bumped into. Uh, but they do extend out for uh, getting around a trailer so that you can see this also has the power operated running boards. Not always my favorite option on a vehicle, but these are well done. Uh, I always find that when you when I'm getting in and out, sometimes they tend to hit my shin. So I usually turn them off and it does have an off switch for those. They seem to work pretty well and they look a little bit sturdier than I've seen on some of the other brands out there. The interior of the Sequoia, you might find very similar to the Tundra. And that's because the dash and everything that the driver can see from the driver's seat is essentially 100% identical, save for a few trim treatments. The sort of Transformers Tonka truck-like pickup truck dash design is here in all of its glory with some pretty nice trims added here in the Platinum. This has some nice soft trims with blue accent stitching. It's handsome. I wouldn't call it luxurious. It still feels very much like a mid-level pickup truck from here, but it is well featured. There's a panoramic moonroof here, which is giving us a lot of light. And the seats I'm sitting in are leather, perforated leather to be exact, and they're both heated and ventilated. Very attractive looking. As far as comfort, um, they're a little bit on the firm side, and for reasons I can't quite explain, during my week with it, I was not able to really get a super comfortable position after spending a couple hours behind the wheel I was ready to get out of them. I have a leather wrapped steering wheel in front of me and ahead of that a full-size digital instrument cluster that is unique here because it has some of the hybrid metrics and gauges on there with the iForce Max powertrain and it is adjustable to some degree to your different drive modes and information sets that you want to see. Very nice looking nice graphics. Looking around though the switch gear is of a very high quality it's what you'd expect in a Tundra pickup truck. Center stack has, in this particular trim, a 14-inch screen. Just below that, the HVAC controls. And down on the center console, there are controls for the suspension and some of the towing aids. Down here, a little cubby. Nice place to put your phone. Here, there's a wireless charger and cup holders that are below a nice cover so you can keep it tidy looking. And here... This is a nice, interesting little thing that you can open to have instant access to the center console, or you can open it all the way up. And huge, big bin down there, big enough for a lot of stuff. I like the fact that this has a conventional gear shift lever in it, not a knob like some of the competitors have gone to. 
I really much prefer that. It's very truck-like, but also just much more intuitive to use. Just behind that is the selector for the transfer case and the drive mode selector. Your rear seat passengers are going to find a lot of amenities and a lot of space. This particular trim grade has captain's chairs that are fixed and they do have a little bit of adjustment in terms of the back rake. But the thing I found here is that as you can see my knees are perched up. It's a pretty low seating position back here and so it's not the most comfortable seating position and these are flat, they are firm so other than the armrests that can fold down and the armrests on the door there's not a lot of support going on but there is a lot of leg room. These seats are set for my height about 5'9 with my boots on. I've got nearly a foot ahead of me. Looking back to the third row a lot of space back there. Adults can sit back there and those seats actually slide and adjust themselves. Not only does the back rake adjust, but you can slide the seat. Looking down at the rear of the center console, there are cup holders back here, controls for the rear air and heat. Down below, two USB ports and an AC outlet. Incidentally, there's also an AC outlet at the rear cargo area that I found quite helpful when we were charging our cameras for our shoot today. Another feature at the back because of these sliding third row seats is a multi-level platform. There's a part that you can pull out and move it into three different positions and, and really adds a lot of flexibility to the storage scenario back there. It's all very cool and good, but all of that apparatus does also take up some valuable space. Overall, this is an interior that is very much just like the Toyota Tundra that we recently tested. Material quality, not as good as some of the competitors. There are a lot of hard plastics in here beyond the soft trims that you can see. Uh, again, going to the fact that we're based on the Tundra. And surprisingly enough, Toyota didn't put a more upgraded dash in here like some of the competitors did with their full-size SUVs. That said, it's a good looking design and there's a lot of versatility in here. This interior gets four out of five stars. The infotainment system here is the top of the line 14 inch screen with JBL audio and really when it comes to feature content it's all about Google. Google inside they say. It has a look just like you might find on an Android auto screen with the white background. Of course you can flip that to a dark background but it has active nav, it's got Sirius satellite radio, you can connect it to your phone and have any streaming service you want. The graphics are good, paging through the menus and finding your way around this and getting to what you need is actually quite easy once you learn the Google interface, a little different than Toyota's of the past, but it works. Nav, for instance, voice activated works very well, works through the Google interface, only here instead of Google we say, Hey Toyota, what do you want to do? What is the meaning of life? Thinking. According to en.wikipedia.org, the meaning of life is freedom from suffering through apatheia. That is, being objective and having clear judgment, not indifference. Thank you, Toyota. I have found this quite fun this week. I've driven along and I actually had almost a real conversation going down the street and asking questions and it's almost like Cortana or Alexa. Uh, she'll talk to you a little bit as long as you're sticking to the facts. This does have a good 360 degree camera and of course there's multiple camera views that you can select and overall I find that the system has good audio. The downside is the fact that a lot of this content is pay based something I'm not real happy about as a consumer. This infotainment system gets four out of five stars. All right, let's take this thing for a drive. So the 2023 Toyota Sequoia is a pretty heavy vehicle, weighs in at 6,130 pounds as tested. That's only about 130 pounds more than the previous generation. And we've got a fully boxed ladder frame, solid rear axle with a multi-link connecting suspension, a fully independent front suspension. Basically, it's a shortened Toyota Tundra and it drives like it. So it feels like a truck out here. And that's a good thing. It's good and rugged and it's designed to take the kind of abuse and 
the kind of use that you're not going to always be able to put a unibody SUV through. And what I'm finding out here on a tight trail like this with some rough bumps is that it is pretty maneuverable. The steering's got a nice lightweight weighting to it. And I just have to be a little more careful than with some of the smaller SUVs I test out here so that I don't scrape it up. But it feels tough and it rides tough, as you'd expect. It's a truck. This has a two-speed transfer case with two high, four high, four low. And there's a switch here on the console so you can do that. There's an electronic locking differential at the rear. And if you've heard that beeping, this has the dash cam, which likes to light up every now and then when it thinks there's an incident. So it's beeping and letting me know that it's automatically turning on. Now we're gonna come out here on my favorite place to test an SUV in a truck, and that is, of course, the Desert Washboard Road. And even though it's not tight off-roading, this ribbed surface can really tell me how well put together this thing is and how well tuned the chassis is. So what I'm finding out is that this rhythmic vibration comes through this structure really well, meaning I'm getting a lot of rattles and shuddering in here. The seats are jiggling all over the place. These doors are kind of rattling in the frames a little bit and particularly I'm getting rattling from the interior trim. And that's because, you know, this is a truck body on frame. And so trucks tend to have a little bit more of that. But this chassis, as I go around some of these corners with bumps and these ribs, I'm finding that it doesn't quite have the smooth gliding sort of refined way about it that the previous generation Sequoia had with its independent rear suspension. Here, I definitely know that I've got a solid rear axle back there with its unsprung weight. And even though they've done a lot to control it, you can still feel it wanting to dance around back there when you lay it into a corner on this washboard surface. All this driving off-road and getting a feel for how it handles in the rough is great, but the reality is, is most buyers are gonna be spending 99% of their time in town on the pavement. On the pavement, this is a vehicle that, just like out there in the wild, drives very much like a Tundra pickup truck, only a shorter one. So you've got a little bit more fore and aft body motions going on, and it, it does feel that it's a little bit more softly sprung to give a nicer ride around town. And with the adaptive variable dampers, it does have the ability to adjust how those dampers are working. And with the air suspension, you put a trailer on this, it's going to keep that level. But I have found that around town, going over manhole covers, speed bumps, undulations, all the normal stuff that we live with every day driving in town, it does tend to feel a lot less refined. Catching a theme here, it's clunky. When you go over speed bumps, there's a lot of odd body motions. It just doesn't feel all connected together, and it certainly doesn't feel solid and tight. It feels loose. When you are going over less than perfect pavement, uh, a lot of the body motions and the things that you're feeling in the chassis just aren't quite up to what some of the others are offering out there. Out at highway at speed, this does have a pretty quiet ride and a pretty stable ride at that. My 70 mile an hour test that I do on the highway, 57.1 decibels, and that is about a 50-50 combination of tire noise and wind noise because we are driving a big square truck. As far as crosswinds and things like that, it does remain somewhat stable, but again, you go over tar strips and expansion joints and this thing feels like it's, it's getting all discombobulated, unsettled quite easily. So this is a chassis that it does have good bones. Uh, it's good for towing at a little over 9,000 pounds as far as the rating. But at the end of the day, when I think about how I would rate this chassis and this platform for overall ride and drive, I have to think of the competitors. I have to think of the Chevrolet Tahoe, the GMC Yukon, the Ford Expedition, all of those that have a pretty solid ride, a pretty solid chassis and one that's got good road manners, whether you're in the rough or out here on the smooth parts of your world. Here, I'm just not experiencing the refinement, the poise, the road manners, and the feeling of 
solidity that I get with all of those competitors. This chassis gets three out of five stars. And last but not least, we got to talk about what's under the hood. You've been hearing it, maybe. So the first question I always like to ask when we're talking about powertrain is, how does it go? Ooh. You can hear it. And 60. You can hear it all right. It almost sounds like a V8, doesn't it? So what's under the hood here is not a V8. It's a 3.4 liter turbocharged V6. And it's a hybrid. There is a electric motor between the engine and the 10 speed automatic transmission that can add extra power. It can power this at slow speeds without the gas engine. And so this engine can start and stop at slow speeds. You can motor under electric power just like most any other hybrid. It has 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque. That is pretty heady stuff. A lot more horsepower than the old V8. That had 381 horsepower and a lot less torque than this. But driving it around, you can definitely hear it. It makes a sound. And this sound is actually quite artificial. It's designed in. This is not actually the sound that the engine makes because I've driven this same engine in other vehicles that it wasn't making this sound. In the Tundra, also here in the Sequoia, they've designed it to give this nice throaty growl and a rumble so that you feel like you got a big tough truck. Unfortunately, they've really sort of overdone it. It's, it's too much for everyday driving around town. It's just always rumbling and growling and it's snarling and, and it, it doesn't even just, it doesn't, it doesn't sound right in my opinion. It just, it's too much, okay? And when you add that to the fact that this engine and this transmission, not very refined, it's very rough around the edges, it clunks and it's always on off the power uh, transition between electric and gas isn't always all that graceful, not nearly as well as Toyota's done with their smaller four-cylinder hybrid powertrains. And really the whole point of it is to save fuel. And so this is rated at 19 city, 22 highway and 20 combined, quite a bit more, about four to five MPG more than the old V8. But I didn't get there this week in my driving, mostly around town, a little bit of highway, I struggled to get it to 17. So my takeaway here is this, we've got this small V6 that's, it's just not as drivable as the old V8, but I'm not getting the payoff of significantly higher fuel economy. And to compare it to Ford's EcoBoost hybrid system that they put in the F-150, that is far and away more refined and uh, more drivable than this. Now they don't offer that in the Ford Expedition to compare this to, as of right now, this is the hybrid if you want that in a full-size SUV. It just isn't quite as refined as any of the other powertrains you're gonna find in the competition. So power is good, 437 horsepower, 583 pound-feet of torque is nothing to sneeze at. It's just living with it, I just couldn't do it every day. There's just so many better options out there right now, V8s, V6 turbos as in the Expedition, they're all just a lot more tame, a lot more refined. This powertrain gets three out of five stars. All right, my friends, we've taken it for a drive. I have shown it to you inside and out. Now it's time to talk about, is this thing really worth 80 grand or not? 80 grand's a lot of money. And the thing is, is when you get into this price range, your, your range of choices out there to buy a new vehicle become very wide. I mean, you, I mean you're looking at full-size SUVs. You've got Chevrolet, Ford, GMC, Jeep now with the new Wagoneer, and you've got Nissan with the Armada. There are so many choices direct, but at 80 grand, you can even look over here, or look over there. And... <sighs> You know, when I look at this, I look at a vehicle that, as we talked about when we drove it, it has some rough spots. It's got a rough engine that's not that efficient for the fact that we've gone to this highly complex turbocharged hybrid V6 thing. 
it's not nearly as enjoyable to live with every day as the old V8 was and not that much more efficient, I dare say. The chassis on this surprised me in how rough around the edges it is and the only vehicle in its class now with a solid rear axle. Everyone else has gone to an independent rear suspension. I did find that a little perplexing that they, that they went that cost saving route. And let's be honest, that's what it is. It's about cost saving yet it's not any less expensive than the competition. So those two things, along with an interior that uh, full of rattles and, and issues uh, that kind of go into the quality control when we were out here driving around with all the noises and rattles, I look at value and I put all of that stuff into it. And so even with all of that, uh, we're at four out of five stars, not the longest warranty, but uh, we're still in pretty good stead with a lot of the competitors in terms of what you get for the money in terms of features. But when you put this in with everything we already talked about in terms of the driving experience and the living with it every day experience, the review comes in at three and a half out of five stars. So there you go. Uh, it, I think it's a great building block. They just need to sort of tighten it up and work on some of the refinement issues. That's I think really where um, some of the competitors out there really offer quite a bit more. So there you go. So if you like what we do, please follow us on social media. You can see all of our channels down below in the information section, Test Driven TV on all of them. You can see our latest video right there, but better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel right down there. Either way, please stay tuned.